Hey guys, Flo from Off to Lens here. I'm a French Australian filmmaker based in French Alps, and today we're talking about lights. I will talk about the kit that I currently own and use, why I decided to get these lights for the type of work that I do, as well as tips to start building yours. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's get into it. So how I use lights. Lighting is not something that I talk about on this channel a lot. The main reason for that is that I actually shoot most of my work using natural light. That being said, I do own a full kit and in this video I will talk about the different lights that make up that kit. A lot of my work consists of filming short documentaries and more often than not there is an interview part and in a lot of cases I will need a light or two. I also shoot a lot of product review videos and lights for this type of shooting are essential. And of course, as you know, I travel a lot which has a huge impact on how I choose my lights. Aperture. When I started to get regular work as a freelance filmmaker a few years ago, I knew that I had to own at least a basic kit to do interviews. My first kit consisted of the Aperture Amaran 672 and two Amaran 198, for a total of around $450. The reason I went with Aperture at the time is that based on the reviews, price and availability, it felt like the right choice. My kit was enough to have a key light and two fills. Since it was a panel, the 672 was also slim enough to travel with. So here are the main reasons I chose and stuck with Aperture. The first one is quality. Of course, as when making any purchases, you always want to try to get the best price quality ratio when possible. I feel like Aperture excels at this. All their lights have accurate colors with a high CRI rating, useful features, great output and are extremely well made. The second is reliability. Since I shoot a lot of documentary work and move around quite a bit, reliability is essential. I need to know that I can carry around my lights and even fly around the world with them and know that it will still work when I get there. A lot of my aperture lights are made of metal and are extremely durable. The third reason is accessories. Another thing I love with aperture lights are the cases that they come with. No matter what size of light that you're getting, you're almost guaranteed to get a very useful case with your lights. They are built with purpose, with a dedicated space for all your cables, accessories, and make it so easy to go and shoot while protecting your lights. I just grab the cases and go. Plus, they look cool and are very well made. Even my smaller ones have handy little cases that fit the light, cable, etc. I also love the accessories that Aperture makes for their lights. The soft boxes, for example, are amazing, and there is a wide variety of modifiers to suit pretty much any projects. The one that I use the most is the Light Dome Mini 2. I can use it on two of my lights, and I like how easy it is to set up and how small it is. The fourth reason is longevity and brand reputation. When I buy something, I always think about resale value. Aperture is a well-known brand and I know that if I decide to modify or upgrade my kit at some point, I can always sell one or two lights easily. People trust in a brand and that is very important when you're investing in your gear. 2. My kit. I won't go too much into the specs of each light, otherwise the video would be an hour long. Instead I want to focus on why I picked these lights and how they fit together. So I decided to use Aperture, but it doesn't mean that you cannot build a similar kit using another brand. My kit is made of 5 lights from different sizes and shapes. Aperture 120D Mark II. So the 120D Mark II is my main light. I say main because it is the one that I use the most and also happens to be the biggest and most powerful one that I own. I use this light for talking heads, whether or not it is for an actual job or just to film myself for YouTube videos for example, but also use the light for my product shoots and gear reviews. The 120D is powerful enough to act as key for interviews and to fill a medium sized room. With it, I use the mini dome 90% of the time, which gives this beautiful soft light. I only take it off when I need full brightness or when I need to bounce the light against a wall, for example. The light is extremely well made. It can be powered via mains or Velux and come in a very sturdy and handy case. It has a high CRI of 96 and has a color temperature of 5500, which is daylight and is the temp that I use the most. You can always use gels to adjust it. For its size, it is quiet as well, which is great for interviews and not too bulky and heavy to carry around either. You also get some cool effects such as fireworks, TV, paparazzi, that can actually come in very handy. All of the settings are controlled via the controller box. I think the 120D Mark II should be considered for anyone looking into building a standard lighting kit. Aperture 60X The second light in this kit is a 60X. This is my latest edition. The light is essentially a smaller version of the 120, both in size and output, but with a few different features that are quite important. As the name suggests, the 60X is much less powerful than the 120D Mark II. Without getting into the specs, you basically have to turn this one up to 100% to get roughly 50-60% to equivalent on the 120. This is great as it means that it works very well as a field light for the 120, or as main if I don't need a lot of output. The X means that it is bicolor, which was the reason I decided to get this one in the first place, since you can also get the 60D. 
you can pick a color range from 2700 all the way to 6500K. In addition to being powered by mains, you can also use V-Log batteries, but also NPF batteries thanks to the included plate. And this in combination with the fact that the 60X is quite small and light makes it perfect for traveling. I can use my travel light stands to mount it too. Some locations are also harder to get to with lots of gear. Having a minimal kit that I can carry around is always very handy. If weight is an issue for a job, I can definitely use it as key for interviews too. There is also no controller box and all the settings can be adjusted from the back panel, which again makes this light very compact without the need of an extra controller unit. And on top of that, the 60X is waterproof, and for me that shoots a lot of documentary work and outside content, you never know when you might need that feature. It also has a higher CRI of 95 and is made mostly of metal. You can get the same cool effects plus an extra few ones such as fire or explosion. With this one you also get bundles and even the DTAP cable is included which is pretty cool. I do not have the dedicated softbox yet and I will get it ASAP, but I can actually use my mini dome thanks to the Bowen's mount adapter. This light adds a lot of new features and variety to my kit. Aperture Amaran 198 This little LED panel is the last remaining light of my original kit. I decided to keep it as it is super light and also not expensive and worth keeping. Despite the size, it is quite powerful and can be powered by MPF batteries or standard double A's. It is a light that I use for travel or whenever I just need a little something in the background. I use it on this food project for example since I could put the light super close just by holding it. You can also fit this light on top of the camera thanks to the cold shoe mount. Aperture MC This next one is probably the most fun one. The MC is a tiny but very powerful light for its size and it comes with a bunch of features that makes it very interesting to own. First of all, it is a full RGB light which allows you to pick pretty much any color you want and adjust the intensity. It can fit in the palm of your hand and can be mounted using the built-in threaded mounting hole at the bottom. It can also be attached to metal items via the built-in magnets. It can be charged using USB-C. The MC also features all the effects you can find on the 60X. I never go on a shoot without it since it is so small and handy. It is great for travel, you can put it in a car, or just to add colors on any products or interior shoot. I even use it for Halloween to capture some creepy shots. For 90 bucks, I cannot recommend this enough. Aperture B7C Bulb this is essentially the equivalent of the MC with the FX, full RGB, but in a traditional bulb shape and function. This light allows you to replace a light in your scene. By doing this, you have full control of the practicals in your shot and the light is flicker free. It can be powered directly from a lamp socket, like a traditional bulb, or can just sit in there thanks to the internal battery. I use a cheap IKEA stand for example. This is what I use in some of my talking head, so it does not flicker can also be controlled from your phone via the Cytus Link app and so can the MC and the 60X. For an interior scenes, you can actually get a few and easily match and control them all at once. This is a very useful feature whilst you're on set or on your own. It can save you time moving around and sometimes depending on where your light is placed on the set, it might actually be tricky to access it and is much easier from your phone. It is an odd little light and quite an expensive bulb but is very useful. What I think is important in your kit. As with cameras and lenses, get the kit that works for you. You need to own the lights that will serve you best and whilst lighting kits can follow the same principle across different genres, they are vastly different depending on projects and the size of the production team. A documentary kit will be different than a studio one for example. A kit will also differ depending on what stage of your career you're at. Do not spend thousands of dollars on five massive lights if all you need is a small LED panel. Think of what you need in terms of output, color temperature, functions and power options and if you can, rent them out before. Rent versus buy. This is a topic that always comes back in filmmaking. I personally think that it is about balance. Balance between what you can afford and how much you use it. For example, I feel like the 120D is a great light to own. It is not cheap, but also not crazy expensive. And the output is very useful for a wide variety of projects. You can use it as key for interviews, product shots, or you can use it as fill if working on bigger projects. If I had one light to pick and recommend, it would be it. The 300D and 600D for example are much larger and much more expensive lights that are better suited to studio and commercial work. They would be lights that I would rent rather than buy. Again, this is just me. That's it for me today guys. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you have enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you. And let me know in the comments what lights you currently own. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.